<clears throat> hey, what's going on, everybody? For Third Week Crunch, I'm Sean Evans. If you had a really zitty scalp, and you're watching Spiciest Interview, it's the show with warm questions and even warmer chips. Today, we're joined by Kelsey Lewin. She's the co-owner of Pink Gorilla Games and MinMax's JRPG Advocate. You can catch her four years ago on youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin. Kelsey, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> It's, it's actually only been four years. It feels like longer. <laughs> That's what YouTube rounds it down to. How are you with spicy food? <laughs> Dang. Uh, not good. I have a quite sensitive stomach. Um, I, I like spicy food to a degree, but I do have a pretty sensitive stomach. So I'm not doing wings today. I don't actually think this, this is more for like, I think it's in my head, you know, like, the, the, that wings the wings would, would be truly the difference hurt maker. me more than anything else that I can put in my body. But I've got uh, carrot chips. Oh, just feels feels like an okay vehicle for the sauce. That's good. Um, I just heard chips, and I brought Tostitos scoops that are a month old. Mmm. So see, I was going to do chips, and then someone rightfully talked me out of that and was like adding the salt to the heat is not going to be a good combo. Really, I kind um, of expected it to help. Because when I've Maybe, well, had I mean, the spicy peppers, I've like sucked on chips and sucking the salt off. It soaked up some of the mm, capsaicin it felt like. I feel like no one knows how to prepare for spicy things. I, I looked on Reddit before this and I was like, what do you do? And all the all of the advice was just it was different between it. Some people were like, do fatty stuff and have some milk and some butter ahead of time. And then people were like, oh my God, don't ever have milk beforehand. <laughs> no, you'll die. Have lemon juice. Like, OK, you know what? Just we're just gonna try to survive that's yep it's all faith-based it's all just psychological i had a full stick of butter beforehand because i believe that helps it probably does yeah you've got the hot one sauces as as is mandatory on this show for the guest and not for me but i have some hot one sauces myself i'm switching up the sauces between a flight of three a light one the classic a medium one Los Calientes, Barbacoa, and of course, a new The Last Dab, brand new. I think all all of those are in my set, maybe, Great. or something similar to them. Fantastic. Well, let's bring out sauce number one. All right. The classic hot sauce. So is this one in every, is this the other one that's in every uh, box? At least for a while now, I think they've been relying on it, yeah. And I'll start with okay. just a... So um, here's my, my first confession is I've never watched a single episode of Hot Ones. Really? The first Hot Ones things I've watched was you and Haley. So <laughs> <it's> just... <laughs> well, if I did my research, oh, then it's lot. essentially the same I mean, this is... I, how much are you supposed to put on this? It's like a dab, right? Well, I mean, I don't think it matters for the first one, but... It doesn't matter a lot for the non not super spicy ones, but, you know, they do have the wing fully uh, wrapped, fully smothered in the sauce. What do you think of that one? Good sauce. I like mine too. Wow. Depth of flavor yeah. there. What what sucks though is that like I really like this one and this is um this is like exactly how spicy I like things so I'm like oh no everything <laughs> everything <laughs> else is going to be much more It's going to be harder. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kelsey, you can be seen in and around Seattle with a flock of your pet birds at your command, sending them out at will to attack foes and collect trinkets. Can you compare the traits of dog people versus bird people? Mm. That is exactly how it works. Um, my birds like to go uh, fetch me shiny things, and I've taught them about dollar bills. Um Nice. No, That's I, I do want to do that. Currency though. That isn't be... natural to birds. <laughs> yeah. Um, and some crows like do figure it out. So I'm, I'm really trying to do wow. that. Um, I think, I think bird people are, uh, I don't think you could, I don't think you have to be only a bird person to be a bird person. Like I'm also a dog person, okay. but I do think that a bird person is, um, it's a unique flavor of weird because like you got these little guys um you've got cats leo right sure do two lovely baby boys yeah so just imagine if those cats were like this big instead and um they were like really really fast and they could <laughs> scream their head off 
Um, but they still kind of like all of the same, like, you know, you got a pill bottle on the counter, they want to knock that over. Like, they want to just cause some chaos, they want to steal, steal your food, but um, at the end of the day, they're just, like, fun little guys with uh, big personalities. Big personalities in a tiny little, tiny little package. Do they like to be petted? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's less of, like, um, you know, you can pet them and you just kind of do, like, a, like you know, one or two fingers just lightly on their head kind of thing, but um, you don't really want to pet their back too much because that's hormonal behavior. Oh. Fun fact. Um, but they do really like, like, neck scritches. They can't really get to the feathers on the back of their neck very easily, so you can kind of, you know, you give them a little neck rub, and they really like that. Nice. I know next to nothing about birds as pets. When they scream, is it uh, for something? Do they need to be fed, or do they need attention, or do they just do it to get energy out? It's usually boredom. Yeah. Sometimes it's because they need something. Um, my birds will scream if they... M Mito really likes to uh, dunk his little pellets in the water, and then he forgets to take them out. So he just ends up with this like gross soup of partially disintegrated pellets, and then he wants to take a bath, and he's like, I can't bathe in this. <laughs> so then he screams, and I have to go get him. Right. Fresh water. Um, but yeah, it's usually just attention. Or they saw a bigger bird outside and they're really surprised to see that there are larger birds. I take it you have had dogs before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had a... Um, I actually just lost my dog that I've had since I was uh, 16 or 17 years old. Um, just earlier this year. So, oh, yeah. um, But she was... Yeah, thank you. She was with me through everything. I mean graduating high school moving here graduating college like every every big life event uh she was there for so um definitely i it's weird it's a weird thing to to lose a pet and then you see other people with a similar pet and you're like man i should no it's just that i miss my pet like it's not that i want it's not really that I want another dog. It's that I just want my dog want back. We're dog. starting off dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a lot of people can relate to that. Me, me included. Um, so a nice mood lightning follow up joke here for you. I mean, question. You collect birds and you also have a complete wonder swan collection. Is that a coincidence? I, it actually is. It's completely unrelated, but it is fun. It's a fun. Uh... <laughs> It's fun that it's bird related. Swans kind of suck though. That's not really like my bird of choice. Oh wow. Overrated? They're mean. They're just mean. They're very territorial and mean and and yeah, and kind of overrated, I think. You know, they get like a whole ballet named after them. <laughs> True. The other birds should have ballets. It doesn't need doesn't need to be swans. Uh, speaking of hot takes, let's get on to our second hot sauce. All right. Which for me is more this... of the first one. <laughs> this is uh, La Pimienterie. La Pimienterie. Hold that up for us. Uh, new newcomer to the Hot Ones fam. This brings a smorgasbord of produce and aromatics to the number two spot with this Thai-inspired hot sauce featuring eggplant, zucchini, and long hot peppers. Eat your veggies, folks. There we go. Gosh, it is hard to act yeah, like feel... we don't know what Hot Ones is when we <laughs> read these up on the show. I mean, I, I don't, so it's easy for me. <laughs> Good. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so is, is, I, I still, I don't know what the appropriate dab is. That's probably too little for a small, for one of the early hot that's sauces, right? That's maybe a right? little too little. Okay, okay. We can adapt But like, that's fly. appropriate when we get to bomb or whatever, right? Sure, yeah, definitely. I can, I can be a little bit of a, of a scaredy cat when we get there. Mm. All right. Hmm. Are you getting the vegetables? All vegetable. That's all vegetable. Nice. No spice? That that's I mean there's spice, but like I think it it feels like it's even less than the classic hot sauce and this supposedly is 6000 Scoville units. I think that's Scoville? Scoville right. something like that. Okay. 
um, as opposed to the first one, which is 1600. So I feel like for a four times increase, I should at least feel, I don't know. I feel like I should notice that, but I don't. They feel about the same. This is really good, though. This would be, like, super good. I mean, it's a it's a green curry hot sauce, and it sounds like it would be great with curry. Can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. At one point, you collected every mature-rated video game for the Nintendo DS because you thought it was funny. What are the highlights of your collection and the themes of that category of game? Of that one specifically, or just of other fun collections within my collection of oh, that one's of that category mature rated nintendo ds game. Oh, okay i i don't know like there's just some weird ones like every single one on there you're just like that's a ds game there's a couple of um uh horror games that none of them are, none of these are really good i'm gonna be honest they're all <laughs> kind of mediocre okay. but like it's it's interesting and i really appreciate an interesting game and i think you do too leo Definitely. so there's a couple of horror games um dementium one and two um, there's a Resident Evil game. Um, I mean, there's like a Mortal Kombat is one of them, which is, you know, and then what are the other ones? I think, uh, I think the GTA Chinatown Wars one is M rated oh, as well. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting one. So it's, it's just like a handful of, uh, there's, there's Resident Evil as like a horror game, but then all the other horror games on there. And this isn't, there's not that many games in this collection. I think it's like 10 or 12 or something. Um, they're just all like weird one-off horror games that are not, you know, it's not from like well-known horror studios or anything like that. It's just like someone tried to make a horror game on the DS and like, um, I don't know. Every time I think about it, I'm just like, if it gets too scary, you just go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the DS? That's like, nice. It's kind of the easiest thing to escape from. <laughs> You have control over it at all times. You have full you power. You have so much control. I know you literally do in other games too, but it just there's something different about it being this like thing on a hinge that you could just go like, nope, and it's like hanging up a phone call or something, you know? Or closing Pandora's box. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share the big tells that a Game Boy Advance cartridge is fake? <laughs> sure. Um, so the, you want to be looking at the... Uh, the board for the easiest tells so you want to open it up you'll need a tri-wing screwdriver um, which is kind of it it's not nintendo proprietary but it seems like only nintendo uses it it's a like a little just just imagine like a peace sign without the circle around like a phillips it. You know head I mean? but with like three lines instead of four with three with three instead of four yeah um and they're all at, at angles i don't know what that angle is but uh, la larger 70, than 90 degrees yeah 75 i don't know um, you know what? 120 is, should yep. be 360 for the whole. So that divided by three. Yep. You know Very what? Nice. I got this. Um, so you open it up, and on the like the the board itself is going to have Nintendo. It'll be in the correct font. Nintendo is very particular about their font. It's never going to not be in their like correct <laughs> logo font printed on the board. Um, Times New you Roman shouldn't see Nintendo. any. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. You'd be surprised you see some really funny ones where it's like they bothered to type out Nintendo, but it's just like it's not even close to the correct font. It looks very That's silly. Right. Sometimes they'll write out Nintendo um, or something <laughs> Which like makes that. makes it not illegal. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> um, a lot of cheap ones will have like big epoxy globs on the board. So the board will just have these big black globs on them. Um, By accident? On a... No, it's just like it's a cheaper way of sticking everything to the board like rather oh. than carefully soldering in all the little pieces you just kind of go okay it's all connected interesting so yeah um and then on the like they tend to get some stuff wrong with the label and the back of the cartridge and stuff too so um you're looking for a very uh like specific emboss on the back and the way that they write nintendo i i find the easiest way honestly is to just have one that you know is legit next to you and then it becomes really obvious because you're like oh okay now i can see that this this font is wrong or this is like engraved too far or something like yeah. that um and then there's a little um you'll have the nintendo seal of quality is always on there you'll have you know the art will look correct and not weird and stretched and um uh, you know, oversaturated or something like that. And then like a little stamp of a couple numbers on the 
on the label itself. So there you go. Nice. <laughs> you have, of course, a really impressive video game collection that's been featured on uh, Collector's Corner, our new show plus from a while ago. Uh, this question has me wondering, do you in your collection value uh, bootleg stuff like that? Weird one off rare items or is it more for archival purposes more having a complete collection versus like an an odd esoteric collection maybe so i like i don't want bootlegs in the parts of my collection that aren't the bootleg collection if that sure. makes sense. like you know i don't want like a bootleg wonder swan game out there with the regular ones but i do i love i love really fun bootlegs because you know, they're, nowadays, a lot of it's just AliExpress. You know, they're just trying to pass off an old Pokemon game as the real thing. But back in the day, a lot of these were made because it was just simply really expensive to get Nintendo games to countries where Nintendo didn't have a presence. So, sure. like, you know, uh, especially, like, places in the Middle East or um, in some, like, some Asian countries that they weren't shipping as much to and, and stuff. And so you end up with some really fun uh bootlegs from those times where it really is just like some people are really just trying to get you know we want to be able to play pokemon here in indonesia like that shouldn't be too much to ask and so you get some uh some bootlegs there and then you get some fun like hacks where they've made some changes to them and um you know passed them off as if it's a real nintendo product and yeah. I, I think those are really interesting that's still a really cool relic of a really specific time in the industry in the world yeah Let's get into sauce number three. All right. Oh, I got to go grab it. I, I don't have a good like space here, so I'm going to grab like two or three at a good time call. and just put them We like being to able me. to see them behind you, too. That's good. Don't tell my cousin who I was drinking his proprietary hot sauces the last two episodes, but I'm pretty excited to have real <laughs> hot one sauces right now. They're oh, <laughs> I won't tell your cousin. Thank you. Okay. All right, the next one I've got is uh, the Krabby Shack Zesty Lemon Pepper. Uh, Brooklynites might recognize this new sauce maker from the eponymous restaurant. This Krabby Shack usually serves this tangy tomatillo and lemon pepper magic with seafood, but it's equally delicious on chicken wings. Uh, how is it on carrot chips? That's what we're this about is to uh, 15,500 skull on the Skullville scale. That's right. So it says spicy is 15,500 max Scovilles from IGN. That's right. That's how many of him you'd have to eat to equal this level of spice. <laughs> I'd be pretty full after one or two. Oh, yeah. That's what I always say, but then suddenly I'm eight max Scovilles deep. Mm. I didn't want to get too many of the hot one sauces because I thought they'd last mm. forever and I didn't have the fridge space, but I'll be going through this one pretty fast. It's it's thin and delicious. How's yours? This is great. Um, I kind of want to know where this is in Brooklyn. No, it's where my partner's from. I say from. He's not really from there, but he lived there for a long time. Um, I don't think anyone's from New York unless you're from New York. You know what I mean? Like, you either have lived there always and you will live there forever, or you lived there for, like, 10 years in your 20s and, like, loved it, and then... I don't know what you call that. That makes sense? Yeah. Uh, a New York uh, aficionado. Which, <laughs> anything else sounds too light, yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I can totally... Like, this is starting to get spicy. Mm -hmm. But we're not into the we're not into pain yet. No, we're into just like oh yeah, us. Nice. Can feel a little bit of heat in my cheeks. Mm -hmm. After working at the used game but stores, I've not had to reach. Oh sorry, sorry. I was just I haven't had to reach for the ice cream or anything yet. Oh, good. So. Good. <laughs> After working at the used game stores, Pink Gorilla, you ended up buying the whole operation with your partner. What was the biggest surprise when you go from being an employee at a store to owning it? Oh, taxes. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible answer. <laughs> I think just the difference between, you know, 
even so I was I was a manager there for a while and even as a manager you still can kind of be everyone's friend a little bit like you you're their boss but like you know it's not like you can't hang out outside of work you can't like you know do something like play a little prank or something yeah, and then peers. once you're like the once you're like the owner um yeah you start having to keep this like professional distance sometimes and that like to me that's actually just a bummer sometimes because sometimes i hire people who are really cool and i'm like when you leave someday we can be friends but right now you know i I can't uh can't really get into that but um i don't know i've really enjoyed I, i can't say that anything was super surprising because i was already entrenched in it for so many years and was doing a lot of the you know, the previous owner was super hands off, um, you know, to its detriment, I would say. But like it, I kind of there wasn't much that was really surprising to me because I was already already kind of running a lot of the day to day. So everything that surprised me was just kind of like different expectations of professional relationships. And then and then, yeah, the reality of some of the money stuff. Yeah, for sure. The- Follow-up question, did it cost more or less than we think it did? Uh, I would say... I would say less, probably. I would say it would it cost less than you would think. Um, but a lot of that had to do with uh, the previous owner just really wanting out and wanting it to go to good hands. I mean, it was still... It was still a very rough amount of money, but it, <laughs> but I think it's less than people would assume. Interesting. At Pink Pinkerella, what are the frequently asked questions you wish you could permanently ban customers from asking? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, for me personally, it's probably just, so do you even play games? Really? Uh, the even in there. Yeah, sometimes they don't have the even, but they've got the even energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like they didn't, they didn't say the word even, but like. They're, the palpable disbelief. They're clearly asking because they don't believe that you do. Um, it is kind of fun to say, "Yeah, I'm the owner." At that point, but uh, but <laughs> that one, that one's yeah. No, can you please explain the what these would... are to me, sir? <laughs> I think I think the um, it's not really a question, but the thing that I like just wish I could get across to every customer is that like old games have always been a little finicky and will continue to be and require like like if you so like a blu-ray disc right like you're probably not going to scratch it accidentally it's pretty hardy it's always going to be a disc it's always going to look like a disc at least until it starts you know until there starts to be like disc rot in 50 years or whatever but um with cartridges it's like there's pins on there that get dust on them so like if you're storing your games in a dusty area you're not cleaning like they're going to sometimes stop working you're gonna have to do some maintenance on them so the, sorry it's kind of a long answer but it's like i just want people to understand that like it's not that your nintendo stopped working it's that you might need to take some canned air you know yeah. <laughs> like or a little bit of isopropyl alcohol like i'm happy to help you troubleshoot but like we didn't sell you a, def- a bad product you just left it in a dusty room and dust got on it and it's 30 40 years old yeah (laughs) yeah Uh, let's get into sauce number four sauce number four all right this is chile lengua de fuego our favorite honduran sauce maker is back chile lengua de fuego combines earthy chipotle and chocolate ghost pepper with ginger and panela sugar for this complex four spot sauce Mm. And this is this is supposed to be like almost three times as spicy as the last one at thirty six thousand five hundred on the Scoville An scale. Army of Max Scovilles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving up to. Uh, at what point can we like fill a stadium with him? <laughs> this is like a bomb. small stadium. Yeah, yeah. Right now it's a pee wee soccer game, but a world famous pee wee team. <laughs> Oh my god, 36,000 people showing up for peewee soccer? In this world, it's a really Incredible. big sport. <laughs> in, in the kind of world I'm imagining. 
All right. Mmm. Mmm, that's so good. Mine? Oh. Mmm. I was not expecting to like this so much. It's hot. Mm -hmm. That flavor is really good, though. Excellent. Yeah. Because of... I don't like... Oh, please. Chocolate spicy is good. I've had, like, a spicy hot chocolate kind of thing before, but I still... I don't know. That surprised me. It's good. Yeah, my last last dab was, was with chocolate pepper X. Mm. And it was really good. Because of your experience right, running me. game stores, if you woke up tomorrow as the CEO of GameStop, what would you do with it? <laughs> Set Game Informer free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, gosh, there are so many things. Um, I mean, so you have, you have to basically rebuild an entire reputation like there's so many things i'm like oh we should change this and that but like it wouldn't functionally change the reputation of gamestop so i'm trying to think bigger than that That's you know true. you gotta I, I i think you have to start with a like almost apology rebrand was there what pizza company did that domino's? it was like domino's or yeah. something sorry yeah. your pizza was bad we're changing I would, it yes i would take the domino's approach and i would just go like hey we have sucked. This has been awful. We're changing everything. Um, yeah. And I'd be, you know, I mean, here's the thing is like physical media is probably not long for this world over the next several decades. So they've done some pivoting into other stuff. And unfortunately, I think that is correct. But I think that you'd start by stripping out a lot of the like just selling protections and trying to diversify too much and really try to be like okay yeah like we do sell like other video game related tchotchkes and whatever um but we are like a video game place we're not like uh, you know cut the like marvel spider-man tumblr stuff from there like get get it video game merch good video game merch mm -hmm. and uh be a lot less like just pushy and annoying towards customers just cut all of that stuff out right um and yeah i don't know like i think that is actually like most of what's killing gamestop right now is its reputation like their trade-in prices are not nearly as bad they have fixed some of these things okay. they've just done no marketing to like show that any of it is any better their trade-in prices are better than they used to be, um, at least on most things that aren't, you know, like a copy of Overwatch that doesn't work anymore. Um, but they've done no, like, hey, things are better. And I mean, you got to really distance yourself from the NFT stuff. You got to, you got to punt that into the sun. Like you have to, it's, I think it's you have to explicitly call, <laughs> I think you have to explicitly call the former GameStop executives idiots and be like, this was awful. These guys were just the worst and had no idea what they were doing. You really do have to pivot and go, we, hi, it's us. We're new and we intend to do things differently. Yeah. Versus it seems yeah. like it's been changing a lot of hands, you know, GameStop up top, but it, the the plan seems to have always been uh, keep it alive at in this state as long as they can until it inevitably goes away. That's what the strategy has seemed yeah. to be. Oh, I'd also... I'd also keep, um, they, it's weird. They still like technically sell things like Xbox 360 games and PS3 games and stuff, but every store I go into, like their online inventory is okay for it, but every store I go into has like four or five games from those. And like, that's just, you either have to not have it at all or have a real section for it. Um, I would go the have a real section for it route because you'd be surprised at how many people still pick up an Xbox 360 and a bunch of games for it because that generation was great and all that stuff's really cheap. Yeah. So totally nothing more thrilling than getting a full giant ass game for five dollars out of the bargain bin. Mm hmm. But yeah, the, the, the not going all the way with it, the just having a few. I think that's totally a good point. It's like nobody's making the trip to GameStop to check out that section. It may as well not be. Yeah, there. exactly. 
Uh, what would you do with Game Informer? <laughs> I would, uh, I'd either set them free or I would prop them up as like our most sacred, beautiful, like, look at what we do. We still run a magazine. That's so cool. We're the only people who care about gamers enough to do that. Yes. And highlight the good journalism they've been doing. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. There was talk about putting our new gameplay todays on on TVs and GameStops. Because like, why did they not do I don't that? Know. They might have eventually, but it certainly didn't happen in my time. There was like, you know, rollover of yeah. the people up top who were trying to make that happen. But that's like such a no. That's... They're making video content. And yet they had that this completely is such different, an different like, uh, yeah, they had Texas they had like, yeah, Which yeah. Um, by the way, I'm from Grapevine, Texas, wow. just so you know. So, <laughs> so you could have stopped all this. Um, I could have stopped all this. GameStop HQ. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree. I, they had they had some hosts that were doing some stuff and like that stuff was good, too. Yeah. But yeah, why not keep it all in Minneapolis? There's kind of no reason. Not to. Yeah, to have a video studio they're paying for already. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? Let's move on to sauce number five. Buy GameStop. Okay. And it'll be cheaper than we expect. Mm-hmm. That's right. Sauce? Is it time for the next sauce? Is it time for the next sauce? Oh, so I have Las Calientes now, but is it, it's a different one. Oh. Okay, you have Barbacoa. I have Rojo. Roho ho. This is at number five. We have the sauce of summer's hotter cousin, aka Los Calientes Rojo. Sweet apricot which mixes with fruity habaneros and a hint of cumin. You know it, you love it. This sounds great. Although it is 49,000 on the Scoville scale. So we're starting to get. Uh oh. I'm, I'm pleasantly pleased with myself so far that none of these have hurt too bad well halfway point's all about to change half halfway point we'll see if number five hurts i'm expecting if not number six definitely number seven well it said you love it right in the description so that bodes well Or else there's a GameStop mm. who did have new gameplay today on their TVs. Too bad that didn't catch on everywhere. Interesting. I sure didn't go into a GameStop to I, check. I'm calling BS on this Scoville scale. Yes, go on. This is like the second hottest one. This Or like the second least hot one. I mean. Mm. This is delicious. I've always suspected it was a sham. And, I, I, okay, so here's my only counter to my own point is I do I can feel the flushing happening a little bit, but like the pain, not at all, and still not even as that sentence. This one's ends. great. Yeah, it's not creeping up. Not a uh, tiny bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit of creep. A little bit. A little of creep. bit of creep factor. Yeah. Okay. It's creeping. It's <laughs> creeping. I'll I'll admit to the creeping. You sometimes have to stand on a box while filming stuff because of your height being not such a high number of inches. Do you have a go-to box or type of box that gets the job done for you? Good milk crate mm. is like the right, like a milk crate or, um, it's, I don't know what the, what the size is, but you know, like a banker's box, it's like about that. Cause I need to, I really need to add like, um, if I'm with someone very tall, I need to add like a full foot. I'm 4'10 for reference. Mm -hmm. So if if we're talking someone, um, you know, uh, my friend Jason, who I've been on his YouTube channel, uh, Metal Jesus Rock, several times. He's 6'4", I believe. So we look ridiculous if I can't get to about 5'10", you know? Like it's even even if I was a reasonable height, I'd still look pretty silly next to him and it wouldn't it wouldn't translate well on camera even in portrait mode. um yeah even in portrait mode i think it would look even sillier actually mm. you'd really you'd really see the the full extent you know how how far down my legs stop before <laughs> right. it starts being the rest of me uh, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it but uh yeah i i've i've taken to just finding shoes that all have a little bit of heel in them or a little bit of platform. So even like my my tennis shoes that I wear every day add about an inch and a half. 
so I'm uh I'm closer to five feet because it's just it's just not fun being quite that short. People stop seeing you as an adult at that point. Really? There's there's are there hidden advantages? Oh yeah. Oh, in a in a crowded space, I can weave in and out of things. Um, I'm a great clamberer. I can climb on top of counters and stuff with the best of them. So because of your experience um, or because of your because of my I think I think it's both. I think it's experience and also like I just there's not as many there's not as much like limb length that can get in the way there, you know. Mm. Um this isn't totally... um, lower center of gravity. I don't get knocked over as easily. There's totally some advantages. Okay. Um this isn't totally related, but I want to be uh vulnerable with you as you are with me. I used a box once at an Airbnb. It was like a wooden crate that held like remotes or whatever. I tried to use it as a squatty potty in the bathroom because I missed mine at home. So I put my feet on it and just the weight of my feet alone immediately smashed the planks out of the box. And I had to like try and was it like it. a was it like a wicker basket or like? No, oh, no, you said wooden. It was wood. It was that, wood. That's not you. That's the that's some like just home goods quality kind of, you know, that's a and I love home goods, but that's that's like everything you get from there is for looking at, not for using, you know? You're right. And it was the, you know, the planks going the opposite way that they're intended to, to control weight. You know, it's like it pushed the nails right out of the board. Mm -hmm. So that's a story from my life. I'm sorry that happened to you. Thank you. We both have experience with our feet on boxes. <laughs> uh, also, best and worst Animal Crossing villager? Uh, best is Midge. Uh, worst is probably Wart Jr., which, like, I feel bad for that guy because, boy, why'd they name him Wart Jr.? What a what a sad name. Is that better or it's worse a than Wart? frog. Yeah. I feel like worse. I think it's worse. Damn. It's like, not only did... Because then it stops being, like, a throwaway name. Like, oh, we named you Wart. You got Warts. It's like, no, we tried to, like, make this a real... A real name. So we thought about this and still decided that your name is going to be a reference to how pimply and small you There's are. There's simply no name more accurate. Yeah. I should go get my other sauces. Sauce number? The next, the next three. Yes. My cat's doing some screaming at me. A la birds. See? He doesn't like when I do the standing desk setup. Because then he can't sit in my lap. <laughs> now just imagine, just imagine if he was like way smaller than that. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine it? I'm imagining it. That's, yeah. Just, and then could up. fly. Mm -hmm. And him flying, he could just fly right up. That's that right. That's interesting. I'll consider putting him through the shrink machine. <laughs> what's sauce number six for us all right um i've got the spicy shark M wait mako snake like from final fantasy there you go oh some final fantasy 7 here happening the mako snake um uh, another newcomer to the wings of doom the spicy shark brings masala vibes to the number six wing with coconut, cumin, cinnamon, cardamom, coriander, and caraway. That's too many things that start with C's. Carolina Reapers and ghost pepper contribute to lingering heat. Mm. Opening that. Oh. That got some in my throat. Wow. So. We are getting to a this serious will be one. Interesting. Yeah, this could be a serious one. This is 71,000 Skullville units. I got a nice glob on this one. All right. Cheers. Cheers. The carrot chips do seem like a great delivery mechanism. Mmm. That's spicy. Yep. Ooh. <clears throat> Mm. Have you gone for beverages yet? Just water, but I think I'm going to go for my yogurt smoothie now. Mm. Does that feel uh, effective? 
Mm. Not really. Maybe it's vanilla ice cream time. Oh. Wow, it's sauce number six. You got to conserve your ice cream. I it's know. It's resource management at this stage. I think just one scoop, maybe two, be good. <laughs> There's two scoops. Hmm. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> the, the sensation of that one? <laughs> that, uh, that it's starting to hurt already, and I got four more to go. Hey, those are, these will warm you up. This one gets you prepared. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Music genres that Ben Hansen is aware of you liking are 80s music and ska. Which do you prefer, if you had to choose? Ska, of course, having its heyday in the I 90s. I love this question. <laughs> Thank you. Ben Hansen wrote most of the um, shots off, Ben Hansen. Um, that's incredible. Um, <laughs> that paints such an interesting picture of me. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's fun to, to see how you're perceived by others <laughs> in a situation like this. <laughs> I think, gosh, it's so hard. Like, if it's if it's going for live music, it's definitely ska. But if it's just like the utility of '80s music, you know, feel good songs yeah, getting pumped all up. the time. Yep, and uh, you know, more likely that other people around you are gonna like join in on it and be into it. So. I would say, I guess, selfishly speaking, it's ska, and unselfishly speaking, it's 80s music. Okay, well, I think selfishly speaking counts more. Um, okay. Um, and so follow-up question. This is a classic Hot Ones question, whatever that is. Who's on your Mount Rushmore of ska? Who are the f four oh or so most pivotal, <laughs> important bands or figures? That's so funny. Um, no, I'm not like a ska historian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you like? Um, because they just picked their favorite president. My number back one, then. yeah, my my number one's probably Streetlight Manifesto. Um, I mean, I, Real Big Fish would probably go on the Mount Rushmore. I don't know they if they're to. in my top four, but they're they're close. They're like five if they're not four. Um, this this like, Mount Rushmore can be sixteen people. Or Scott bands usually have like eight or yeah. ten, right, with all the horn players. So yeah, 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 like, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, two, three hundred. Yeah, I like uh, Catch Twenty Two. Um, I like. I mean, everyone likes Less Than Jake. Yeah, um, Less Than Jake, love in the chat. Yeah. Um, Big D and the Kids Table. I'm mostly thinking about what I was listening to, like when I was really into ska, which is not necessarily the best ska bands. I think. Yeah, sure. I think Streetlight Manifesto is probably like the upper echelons for me like that's the one that stood the test of time i still listen to them pretty pretty regularly okay. um yeah i uh the only ska band i really listened to with regularity was the aquabats who oh i love the aquabats nice. okay i forgot that counts yeah they eventually graduated from ska or uh turned their back on ska depending on how you look at it but their first couple albums are totally <laughs> ska and totally really good i still listen to them i went to an aquabats concert and it might have been I think I was 16 years old. That might have been the best concert ever. Um, yes. They, their opener was a band called Cuckoo Kangaroo, oh and they God. threw out one of those big, um, like, it's like the big rainbow tarps that you would play with when you were in preschool, and you'd, like, go run under the big tarp, and, and they'd, like, wave it and stuff. Yes. So they threw out one of those, so everyone was, like, dancing under the big rainbow preschool tarp. It was... It's pretty fun. I went to an Aquabats show in high school with friends where Cuckoo Kangaroo opened for them. <laughs> I bet it was the same I tour. I bet it was. That's so crazy. <laughs> That's also awesome. an amazing. Did they bring the cool show. rainbow? Did they bring the cool rainbow Not thing? That I remember. What I remember is uh, them telling people to stop moshing so hard because people in the front were getting crushed <laughs> for the Aquabats Porsche. <laughs> we were into it. That was one of the best concerts of my life because it's. That rare yeah. chance to see a band at the peak of your interest in them. Mm -hmm. Always a special, special moment. Yeah, for sure. Let's go to wing number seven. One before Ooh. the bomb. All right. I've, uh, I've recovered from the last one. This is Adobo Loco Jalapeno Chico. 
Mm. Uh, making sauce is a family affair for the folks at Adobo Loco. The Hawaiian hot sauce legends kick up the spice factor with the super smoky jalapeno and scorpion pepper blend. Watch out now. Watch out. But not with your eyes. I do. On the eyes. I was confused because this is, you know, it's like, it's called jalapeno. And I'm like, jalapenos are, you know, compared to the rest of this stuff, not that spicy. So... Yeah, it's not a considered a super serious pepper, even though if you do have a full raw, a seeded raw jalapeno. jalapeno. Yeah. yeah, a raw jalapeno is extremely spicy, and I think people forget that and don't respect it. Try respecting it, folks. Try respecting it. Mm. Mm. I had the chip, the Tostito scoop full to the brim with that barbacoa sauce for this one. Mm. So yummy. Okay, this could be a creeper, but... But you're fine? Easier than the last one. Okay, we'll check back it's in. It's spicy. Don't... Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. You were the but... social media manager for Fuzzy's Taco Shop in South Lake, Texas from 2010 to 2012. Hey, look at my LinkedIn. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what now-deleted tweet this reply of yours was in reference to? At Mitch McKee 12. Thanks for the shout out, Mitch. Sorry about your butt. Dot, dot, dot. The tweet is now deleted that that's replying to. <laughs> this could not have been when I was doing this, but maybe it was. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, so, uh, Fuzzies, which is, um, oh yeah, this is creeping now. Um, it's a taco chain in Texas that I worked for when I was in high school. Um, still really love it. Got kind of addicted to the food. Nice. So whenever I go back, I have to have it now. Um, but they had a sauce called butt burn and hot sauce. So my guess is it's in reference to butt burning hot sauce. Ah, that's helpful. Yeah. Um, however, I will say butt burning hot sauce would be uh, zero on this scale here or maybe like a number like the first one or something like it's just it's very it's not hot at unless all you put it on it's your butt. delicious but it's not hot unless you put it on your butt and you probably shouldn't do that did you like doing social media what was your, that experience like for you so it's funny because um this is this is basically around the time when companies started getting social media accounts like this this would have been like 2010 2011 uh -huh. Um, you know, Twitter existed, Facebook certainly had been around for a while, but like, it was still mostly a social network and not like a, um, spicy. Mm. <laughs> and um, I think even when brands were coming to it, it was before the like, we're your friend attitude they have now. It was a little more yeah, political. And, and I was just always a real go-getter and I, um saw this was happening that brands were getting social media accounts and i worked for this taco shop and i was like we should get on social media that's the thing all the brands are doing i'll run it and um nice. yeah i i did like a little pitch and everything to the owner of this uh specific chain of franchises i think it was like four stores it was like south lake rowlet i don't remember the other two but they're all like North Texas, Dallas Fort Worth area um, restaurants. So, yeah, they let I like went around to the locations. I like took some photos. I got us all set up with social media pages and posted about like Taco Tuesdays and you know five dollar margaritas and all that fun stuff. So it was it was fun. It was I have no like I really doubt that as a sixteen seventeen year old I was crazy effective, but like also no one was yet. So. I don't think it stood out, you know, right. like I was just kind of going off of the vibes of what other people were doing. Yeah, I uh, similarly, my friend and I pitched to a local ice cream place making their website when we were mm. 12. So this would have been 2005. Not like websites were a new thing, but not everywhere had them at that point or could easily make right. them themselves. So that was like the most money we'd ever seen in our lives was getting like $800 each to make a full website for them. Wow, yeah. Which they okay. wordlessly changed less than a year later because it wasn't very good. <laughs> but damn. Sorry about that. That's I hope kids these that's days. That's a lot of ice cream you could buy with that, though. It's true. Damn, that money got spent. Uh, I, I hope kids still have the chance these days to, to come up with weird ways to make money with their community like that. I, 
I mean, I assume it's just TikTok because like I'll do your even, TikTok, yeah. Yeah, like I I don't have a TikTok. Like and I it's one of those things that's like, yeah, I know I should be doing TikTok and I'm just not. And it's mostly because I'm pretty sure it would eat my brain, but sure. um Oh my god. Marie and I'll talk about something and then f- f- five minutes later she gets a TikTok about it. It's bizarre. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. I guess there always will be those things that adults don't understand that kids do. That an entrepreneurial one can can pitch. Totally. Let's get into sauce number eight, which you not being a Hot Ones uh, super fan, I will warn you, is the spiciest one. Yes. It's the one that kills you. The one where I'm going to cry. Yes. All right. The bomb. I feel like I need, I feel like I need like a Hello Darkness, my old friend, playing over this. Right. Oh, I just got some on this desk. That just reminded me, I was supposed to have give... music playing over this episode, and I forgot. Apologies, Ben <laughs> Hansen. <laughs> okay, all right. This is just a normal day with a normal hot sauce. That's right. It's all psychological. Nothing, nothing to be afraid this of. This is mayonnaise. Here. This is mayonnaise. This is mayonnaise. This is mayonnaise. I'm going into my final sauce, the last dab, a little bit of it, honestly, a good amount of it <sighs> to match the, the pain level. Oh, that's a lot of it. Someone told right. me people um, like poop themselves on this show. Anyways, bottoms yep. up. Like we told you to be in your bathroom for the recording. Mm. Mm. I feel like this one's got a little that less flavor unpleasant. than the chocolate pepper X one I had previously. That's my initial read. Whoa, it's hitting. Whoa. How are you? Ice creaming? Oh, I should have ice cream. And screaming on the inside, too. Oh. Oh. We all screaming. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) mine keeps getting worse. All right. I'm like, I'm trying to like stop it from getting worse by just continuing to shovel ice cream in yeah what what, mm. what you know what roll it around in the mouth but besides instead of swallowing yep. it's if like i that. stop for a second it gets way worse mm. Mm. oh i had too much i had too much okay so this one's a hot ones reference too so this is really funny to people okay all right, so we have a recurring segment on the show called Explain That Graham. And what we do is I tell you a price I'm about to spend on a used video Graham, and you tell me whether I'm getting a good deal or not. Does that sound good? Mm-hmm. 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 Liberty City Stories on PSP for $20. Loose or complete? Uh, uh, complete. Like, complete meaning with box and manual? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Nestor's Funky Bowling for Virtual Boy for $100. These are all complete? Yeah, let's say they are. That sounds about right. That might be a tad high. Okay. Futurama for PS2 for $300. It's not that expensive yet, is it? I thought it was like Some places. $120 or something. Mm-mm. I think it's like half that. It's expensive, but mm-hmm. I don't think it's $300. Okay, good to know. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check. Why is that one so rare? Are, are these know? real? Are these things you are? Are these things you are the, actually considering? Um, no, but these are real things at prices I have seen. Mm, okay. Um. Oh God, it really has gotten that expensive. It's not. It that's still high, but not. I thought it was like one fifty, one eighty. Why is that one so rare? Um, do you know? I don't. I don't know why that one's so rare. I mean, the answer is always supply and demand, but like, yeah, I don't know if that one was just a low print run, um, late in the life cycle, something like that. Sure. NBA Elite mm. Eleven for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty for a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Wow, because that was released for just a very short period of time, right? That one, I think, was. Um, technically recalled wow um yeah in fact a thousand dollars i think is a very good deal wow do you know why it was recalled was it a licensing thing probably 
No, I I don't remember the details of that, but it was yeah, it was recalled, so it was never actually supposed to hit shelves, but it did, and so that's why some of them are out there. And then I think more were found in a warehouse later. <laughs> um, so you'll see oh. some sealed PS3 ones sometimes, because someone found like a box or two in a warehouse. Interesting. Um, we'll take it, take questions from the chat to buy more time before we have to have more hot sauce. Joe Carver says, what does Kelsey use to check mm. prices so quickly? eBay? Would you have a go-to source? Oh. Yeah. Um, pricecharting.com, which I will, I will caution is not a like accurate thing. It's, it's an, it's an aggregate of sales and it. Better. And it gets stuff wrong. Um, especially because it's just, it's just pulling from sold eBay listings and stuff. And sometimes it'll like it'll catch a couple you know false flag things where it's like this isn't actually the game this is like the box art for the game or something um false flag interesting yeah yeah um <clears throat> so uh oh what happened what's up sorry my headphones have been desyncing um so it's a good it's a good like just check it real quick and then continue to do research past that. Um, right on. Like it'll it'll show you. You can click on the actual listings, although it it most of them just kind of uh, just disappear after a while because uh, eBay doesn't keep like old listings up anymore. But it's a good aggregate. It's a good place to start, at least. I am selling an old graphics card on eBay right now. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about this at all until this very second. Should I post that on like the MinMax Discord? Do you think anybody bid on it because it's mine? Probably. That could be interesting. That someone's going to want you to sign the graphics card <laughs> that they're never going to see. Yeah, in some kind of non-melting ink. Yeah. What GPU is it? It's a 20... Once again, brief tea tour so we don't have to eat sauce for a minute. Um, uh, I forget where it says. It's a 2060 G GTX. Oh, I d it was Joe used Carpet to make real videos. Yes, it, I did render <laughs> videos on it. <laughs> See, that's cool. Um, Joe Carpet also asked, what's the most expensive game I've sold? Mm. Um, we had a copy of Nintendo World Championships in once and um boy do i so the whole story makes sense once you hear the whole story but um it goes for like eight times this now but we sold it for um mm, i can't even remember it was somewhere in between 10 and twenty thousand dollars it goes for like almost a hundred now um and uh it literally was some guy who had no idea what he had, and we paid him extremely well for it. And we're like, look, here's the deal. You can probably get this much if you want to try to sell it yourself, or we will give you, you know, pretty close to that, but we're going to, you know, make something on top of it, too. And he was ecstatic and, um, you know, and sold it to us. Um, I wanted to sell it within three days because this was right after e3 had leaked all of the press's addresses emails phone numbers like just docs right. to everybody so see so count your blessings you didn't go to e3 leo you could have had your address leaked. that's a good point <laughs> um so uh basically we had this like it was very public that we got this trade in in like I think like Kotaku wrote about it or something, just because it's so it's so infrequent that one of these pops up, and especially someone who doesn't know that they had it. Um, so there, it was like public knowledge that we had this very expensive cartridge. My address was public; <laughs> like people could oh, find God. where I lived. Um, and I was like, I want to sell this very publicly, very quickly. Um, and then also, I was uh, about to be going out of town like three or four days later or something like that. Like, a, I had a, a trip planned. So I was like, I just need to sell this to whoever can give me the most amount of money in the next, like, four days. Um, so we did not get, like, top dollar for it. We just, you know, profited a bit and 
went our separate ways. But yeah, that that cartridge had I held on to it would be like a hundred thousand wow. dollars. So respect, respect for treating it's... the person fairly. Hmm. Um, I think it's time to go to sauce number nine. That was I'm... the most pain I've been in on this show so far, for sure. Yeah. I so I will say I heard that this normally makes everybody cry. This was crazy painful. Yeah. But I didn't cry. You're very brave. Um, because I'm really tough and really cool. Yeah. Um, but also because this one's called Da Bomb Evolution, and I don't know if this is a different one, and they maybe made it easier. They definitely made it taste better. That, I believe, is the pitch for that one. Is okay. It's still the stunt one, but it also has flavor, as opposed to being just a nightmare. Okay. I didn't taste flavors. I just tasted pain, <laughs> okay. but I didn't taste like... I didn't taste like gross either. It was just pain. And pain has no flavor. Pain is its own flavor. Okay, last two. Last two. Woo. Toss number nine. What do you what do you do with these? The sauces? Like I mean the ones the crazy like sauce. The bomb and past. You know, I have no idea. I like what the I idea of to like, do with this? trading them between friends who also want to do the challenge, and then you yeah. kind of like have well, to. Well, I asked Ben. I was like, "Should I just ship this to the next person?" He was like, "No, keep it." I'm like, "Why? <laughs> what am I gonna do with it?" That is actually a good idea, <laughs> but maybe it'd, it'd be hard to ship refrigerated. Yeah. So, anyways, if Minmax goes under, it's because Ben's really bad with money, and he wants us to each buy our own <laughs> set of hot sauce. But these were an investment, and we can resell them if we need. I didn't yeah. open this one. Ah, oh, dang it! I thought I opened all these beforehand. Okay, hold, please. Holding. Holding. Keep holding. Keep on How it. How much money will hot ones make for Minmax? Asks Crowboy. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. They're so this cheap. this set was one twenty. Yeah. So my set of three was fifty it, or so. Oh my god, this of course is like the hardest one to open too. I'm sorry, guys. This is. It doesn't have one of those little tear strips like the rest of them do. It's just like this one's childproof. Like it's a, yeah, it's like a bottle of wine or something. <laughs> right. Well, then saber it. A fine vintage. I'm not gonna sniff this. That will <laughs> that will hurt. Yeah. So this one is supposedly like five times hotter than the bomb. So they say. What do they say? Okay. So this one is Alchemy Peppers Watermelon Ghost, which is a cool name. Um, it says first it's super refreshing, then it's super spicy. Alchemy Peppers creates this unique number nine sauce using ghost peppers, citrusy hops, and sweet tart watermelon. Yes, you heard that right, folks. Watermelon. I don't know why that's so unbelievable. <laughs> that it's watermelon. <laughs> I'm curious how refreshing that is for you. Hops are all the rage now. Everybody's talking about hops. Hop water. You're trying this stuff? Hop water? It's non alcoholic. Beer? <laughs> but it's different Why would beer. you want that? I don't know. I got friends who really like the taste. It's kind of a LaCroix type huh. deal, you know, just a subtle thing. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Humans have evolved oh, past boy. collecting water. This might have been too much. Uh oh. That's okay. We'll we'll survive. We will persevere. Um all right. Yes. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy, my tongue is so mad. My tongue is so mad at my brain and hands for their roles in this. I do not like this flavor combination. Watermelon and hops? And <laughs> ice cream? <laughs> and uh, yeah. And pain and ice right. cream. Um um i have maybe not oh go on oh uh, not not as bad as the bomb hurts but i'm not eating ice cream as quickly <laughs> yeah good way to measure um i maybe heard you mention your youtube channel in passing your previous youtube channel i mentioned at the start of the show but i was surprised to check it out today and see it at over a hundred thousand subscribers yeah dude i got my silver button yes 
Did you find that uh, creatively fulfilling? Would you ever see yourself returning to it? Yes. I honestly, I loved the research and the writing. And then everything after that, I hate it. And that's, ah. um, you know, that I, I actually, filming was okay. Um, and even getting B-roll was okay. I guess, I guess it's really, it's really the editing. Um, yeah, you could outsource that. That, yeah, I know. I could. I think, of, I, I really do, I still think about it sometimes. Um, I enjoy doing it. It's just, like, it's, it's time consuming. Like, it is a, I don't know if you know this, Leo, <laughs> but um, YouTube, no walk in the park. It's a real job. <laughs> If you ignore how fake it is. <laughs> yeah, um, a lot of uh, short essays about rare items that you own and pieces of video game history and stuff like that for people who want to check it out. The, the videos are timeless. Definitely worth. Yeah, what, what I couldn't. The, the, the thing that was the hardest for me was I, even though I was never trying to be a career YouTuber, I could not escape the pressure of like put out something at least once a month or at least every couple of months or something like that. When truly like. The content I want to make probably takes like three or four months to produce because I'm I'm researching something like what I really wanted to do was make um, 10 to 30 minute videos that are just like, have you heard of this video game thing? Like, I'm going to just do the deepest, most thorough uh, discussion on the Internet. No, um, the, the deep like such a just a concentrated bomb of knowledge about a random thing you know, with interviews and like all and other sources and everything. But all of that takes so much time. Um, yeah, to like put together. Um, and then I would I would feel pressure like, you know, oh, when's the next video? And so then I'd get sidetracked from that and I'd be like, OK, let me put one out about like cool Game Boy colors or something. And like it's not that those are bad videos because they're still they still have interesting information and stuff in them. But like. I I just couldn't handle the the back and forth pressure of like I have to put the really cool ones on hold to do one I don't care about as much just so that like there's always a video popping up every once in a while yeah. and I'm not even like that was even only like every I was still only at a clip of every couple of months like it wasn't a a weekly um you know monthly or weekly thing so I don't know how some of you guys do that it. That is an interesting part of it. It's I having experienced it recently. I put like two months into a video at the end of last year and then diverted and did two other videos and now I'm back to it. And ha breaking your momentum like that, it's can be hard and it's definitely hard to like get back into it. Get back on top of that hill that you once spent so much time cresting. But I find it kind of energizing to be bouncing between stuff like that. And I do see like the value of having fewer higher quality things further apart is such an awesome way to do it and i think if i didn't do it for a living that's that's what i would do is just in yeah. my free time at a, at a non-burnout rate chip away at like a massive thing and it's just like a moment when it when it drops it's a bigger deal yeah and i don't i don't have to do it for a living so i i mean i totally could be doing that all the way um it's just it's it really is just the pr the pressure from like individual people I feel like that that gets to me at least like you know people just constantly like messaging you like when's the next one when's the next one and eventually I'm like ah okay I'll th throw something out yeah <laughs> totally um I'm too I'm too easily influenced I guess by that yeah that could be hard that can that can be pressure um last little question before the final sauce here you were a marketing intern for the New York Mets for a summer in 2013. Any fun stories from that experience? What was that like? Um, it was cool. It was, um, yeah, I, my, my dad was, uh, also in New York and I shared his 350 square foot. Like he, it was kind of a temporary thing, but he had a 350 square foot studio in Manhattan and we shared that. And, uh, if you've ever tried to live, in 350 square feet with your dad it's <laughs> i love my dad but that that was a lot yes. thankfully he was he was out of town for a good portion of that so it wasn't it wasn't too crazy but wow. um smallest place i am, was 500 really glad I, it's hard to picture smaller than that with someone else yeah oh yeah i mean it is it was like it was basically a bed and you know technically a bathroom and technically a kitchen you know what I mean? like <laughs> yeah. it, was, it wasn't great bathroom at. um 
Yeah. Better. Um but it was it was definitely cool to just like have that I it was only for a few months, but I like got to live in New York for a few months and that's an experience I'm glad I got to have. Um but uh yeah, I did it <sighs> Half of my job was just like spreadsheets, which is not what marketing sounds like, but like they just they really I don't think they had a lot of stuff for us to do. So it was like, um, you know, figure out what all all the other teams are doing for their promos and that sort of thing. And we can compare them and make our promo schedule and, you know, um, but the cool parts were like I got to <laughs> I got to be part of the entourage that walked uh, Mr. Met and David Wright to Good Morning America <laughs> one morning. And, like, and your secret service just, glasses and earpiece. Yeah, just little stuff like that. And just being able to, um, I think the coolest part actually is just being in the ballpark when there's not a baseball game happening. Isn't that like, magic? It is a, it's so cool. Like, uh, cause the offices are still like in the ballpark. So um, you get to City Field and you like, there's just some, some offices and stuff and there's just absolutely nothing going on like i've gotten you know i've been very early to baseball games plenty of times and that's its own thing but there's still like some hustle and bustle and stuff but like just it being basically empty is a, is a whole different thing that's cool. that's so oddly like one of the most memorable parts about max Payne three is the level that's in the empty soccer stadium it's like what a cool place to explore here at yeah Nome, known around. yeah besides all the people i'm headshotting um let's get into <laughs> sauce number 10 and as the last dab, the last dab, and as we munch it, I will issue you your final challenge. Okay. Maybe ever, depending on how. This so what's goes. what's the story with this one? Because this one's also in all of the, all of them, right? Yes, they smother it like the rest of the wings with the sauce, but it's tradition around here to put a little extra on an an extra dab okay. on top. Hence the last dab. So I'm gonna put. All right, so I'll do like a good amount of this one. Yes. Like a full. But it's also really crazy. Really coat this it's like, carrot chip. This is what killed me earlier. Okay. I'm doing this much. We've got a very coated carrot chip that here. That is hot sauce coated in more ways than one. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to Cheers. our original concept for New Show Plus. Oh God, you feel it in the nose, don't you? Mm. Oh, that Ugh. that expands. That it's a gas that expands inside your mm. endocrine Ugh. system. It's all in my face. Ooh, why is it all in my face? <laughs> <gasps> why is it all in my face? Okay, um, that one's kind of gross. I thought that one was supposed to be. I gross. swear, I like the previous one. I had better. The chocolate pepper X versus uh, Apollo. Yeah, this one's pretty Ugh. intense. Uh, <clears throat> so I have here some footage from Base Wars for NES. Are you are you familiar? Somewhat. I, I can certainly uh, explain the cartridge to you. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna stream it to you in Discord. Okay. <laughs> If you want to pull that up. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, this is awful. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. What? And what I want you to do as we go through this final ordeal is to provide an inning or so's worth of baseball sports casting. Walk the radio listeners at home through what's happening on the field. Oh. Does that sound good? Mm, absolutely. Oh, okay. Here goes nothing. Okay, so this is the New York. I don't know. Do they not have team names? Man. New York man. All right. So we've got a, a line drive. Oh, so no, that's a pop up. <laughs> Easily to the oh, to the pitcher. Part right. second pitch. Ooh, that is a swinging strike at a fastball. Mm. Hit sharply down. <laughs> to the third baseline. In time to the first baseman. This is happening way yeah, too I'm fast. I'm gonna slow Leo. it down. I'm gonna slow it down. <laughs> More regular baseball speed. <laughs> All right, we've got the pitch and a high pop up out to right field. Will he get under it? No, it is gone. That is a home run for the the, the New York robots. 
<laughs> mm. Ball! Looks at a ball down and away. I'll be the umpire. Hits the next one. Foul down the first baseline and into the stand. I wish they had names. They have names? Oh, Daniels. <laughs> yeah. Daniels. Daniels. Daniels looks at a strike. He's kind of hovering over the plate. Really close. Really crowding the plate. Um, the pitcher is just throwing way outside. He is out of control. Right down the middle, but Daniels swings and misses. Uh, we've got Black. He's a tank. This guy's a, this guy's a tank. And he hits a high fly out to left field. Um, sh shot back to the first baseman? That didn't look like a throw. It looked like a... No, do they have that? Like you shot it out of the air. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ugh. Okay, these are very fast pitches. No need for a pitch clock in this version of baseball. Yeah, he's like hitting it with a like a laser sword or something out there, so they don't catch them. You've never seen this in your oh, sports you've got two... career? No, I've never seen this. And apparently, apparently, the second baseman and the runner beat each other up with a gun. What is My happening? God. Well. That was a that was an interesting inning of baseball there. I'm surprised the benches didn't clear over that. Mm. New York is up two to nothing. <sighs> All right, this is starting to fade a tiny bit, but I feel it in my heart, <laughs> which feels bad. Is that <laughs> supposed to happen? Am I supposed to feel this in my heart? <laughs> I feel like it, it, like in my spine, and like if you saw just a ghostly <laughs> visage. That I leave behind. That's what's full of hot sauce. Any moment I'm not eating ice cream is pain. Oh. Uh. Oh. Nobody look at my this bookmarks. This is a. Yeah, base, base force looks looks pretty fun. It's just way too fast for me though. Baseball is a little boring. I think we all know it, and we don't know what to do about it. Uh. This is not the answer. <laughs> no. Oh, really fast is not the answer. I will say, um, I don't know if you know this, Leo, but last year they changed a lot of rules in baseball to make the game go faster and have more action. Um, Did it work? It's been working, yeah. So they, they introduced a pitch clock so that you, you can't take forever to throw the ball. <laughs> um, That's good. They made the base bags a little bit bigger, and then I think the most important one is they banned what's called the shift. Do you know what the shift is? No. The shift is like in um, in the outfield. You used to be able to just kind of shift everybody over. Um, so if you have like, let's say you have a a guy who bats left, and he just always lines stuff directly to right field like he basically never hits anything in the left field you just kind of have everyone crowd over on the right side right. so you have a way bigger chance of being able to like catch or field whatever he hits out there um they bumped left field so they banned that at that time yeah so they, they banned that so now you have to stay within um like a certain spot you really you can't like migrate too far from your position and that means that way more balls get down on the ground people it's get on way base. more base runners and yeah that's a great idea so it's great it is it's been really good for the game it mean it means that like no pitcher is ever going to be as good as previous pitchers ever <laughs> yeah, <right>. but <laughs> that's fascinating you know, small small price to pay kelsey thank you for the baseball expertise and congratulations on You're taking welcome. on the wings of death <laughs> living to tell the tale there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for <sighs> you Check, look at your camera and tell us what you got going on in your life. Got any plugs? What you up to? What do I have going on in my life? Um, just this, just pain right now. Yeah. Um, Recovery for a while. <laughs> up yeah, next. I just, I just got done with convention season with the store. So I was just doing a bunch of, uh, we had Comic Con and Sakura Con and Washington State Gaming Expo. And so now it's time for me to just live life a little bit. Um, starting to get sunny here in Seattle. And I just got a, a Moto Compacto, the like little electric scooter that folds up into a suitcase. So Ooh. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing anything other than min max and just you know and pink gorilla work right now because I'm trying to have a good couple of months. That's my 
<laughs> I really don't have anything to plug. Although maybe you guys can bully me into doing YouTube again. We'll All see. right, people, honestly, get on that. Work on that. <laughs> Comments. Let's see them. Uh, this has been spiciest interview the latest the third episode of the latest series of new show plus we got interviews with Haley mclean and michael huber from easy allies uh up right now our backstage pass patrons can vote to continue this show next week with a new person being interviewed or uh start a new show and free us from this pain uh but it's all up to you it's all in the patrons hands uh it's been a very fun show so far and it's it's you know it's always fun to have a new show plus really catch on and really go for the the uh, full run around the bases. Hey. As we like to say around here. Uh, thanks for <laughs> watching, everybody. Do not support Hot Ones. Do not watch them. We are them now. <laughs> What's Hot Ones? Exactly. Bye. <laughs>